in everyday life is so different in what you feel about things compared to what's going on behind the scenes. Why would I spend a lot of time thinking about that world, the quantum world? And the answer is that there's no other option. Marvin Cohen is not just the second most cited physicist on Earth. He's a painter of nature's tiniest landscapes, an explorer who set out upon the temperamental waves of the quantum world to bring the designs of our universe up from the depths, right. building a 50-year legacy that gave humankind the ability to see the inner workings of matter, as well as the ability to create super-efficient processors and nanomaterials. And he did it using only a primitive computer and the power of his mind. I was a great student in Canada, and then I came here. Cohen spent most of his high school years on the streets of San Francisco, sneaking into gritty jazz clubs, underage, with nothing but gravitas and a saxophone. Yeah, I didn't take school very seriously. I played jazz. I had bands. I even had Johnny Mathis in my band. I actually gave him advice. I told him never to sing popular music. He should just sing jazz. I don't always give the best advice. But Cohen would eventually trade his saxophone for science. He took a lifelong interest in physics to the University of Chicago, where he completed his Ph.D. in 1964. And in 1966, Cohen unleashed an idea upon the physics community that would make science history. Knowing how electrons behave within a material helps engineers predict how the material might function in real-world applications. Applying quantum mechanics to calculate the movements of electrons inside a material creates math too complicated to solve in any practical sense. Early physicists had sought to approximate electronic structure using equations that would limit all but the most basic computations. However, the results were often overly simplified and couldn't be used to accurately describe real-world materials. Like a movie streaming over a slow internet connection, less data typically means blurry pictures. This may work fine for streaming simple shapes like this, but typically for complex imagery like depictions of nature, the more data we eliminate, the less usable the images become. Cohen decided to shed data that didn't matter. Cohen found a way to use a single piece of experimental data in a computer to create an understanding of how the materials work. And in the end, he developed a method of writing computer programs that physicists could use to predict the properties of real materials using simple, downloadable code. This forever changed computational physics. I saw this computer program, we familiar, and I said, uh, how much do you want for that? He said, oh, it's really simple. And he said, it's only $500. And I said, only $500? Do you know how much work I put into that thing and you're selling it for a lousy $500? The availability of Cohen's methods set off a gold rush in Silicon Valley as engineers jockeyed to create processors that are more efficient. Cohen's methods would help physicists understand the properties of supermaterials like graphene, and his extraordinary body of work would include major successes for a field he largely helped found. We've all looked at the sky and tried to understand how did it all start? Sort of the Wizard of Oz, what's behind the screen? I hope we don't find it just that wizard, but uh, it's, it's an important part of why we're alive to find out about things of this kind.